Change has come to America. Believe me. Help is on the way. Knock, knock. Who's there? Hey! It's a segment of your imagination. Randy Road Show. Turn up your mind. Some of my Republican friends want to take the economy hostage. I get it. Unless I agree to their economic plans. All of you at home should know what those plans are. Instead of making the wealthy pay their fair share, some Republicans, some Republicans want Medicare and Social Security to sunset. I'm not saying it's a majority. Let me give you, anybody who doubts it, contact my office. I'll give you a copy. I'll give you a copy of the proposal. That means Congress doesn't vote. Well, I'm glad to see you. No, I tell you, I, I enjoy conversion. <laughs> you know, it means if, if Congress doesn't keep the programs the way they are, they'd go away. Other Republicans say, I'm not saying it's a majority of you. I don't even think it's even a significant. But it's being proposed by individuals. I'm not politely not naming them, but it's being proposed by some of you. Look, folks. The idea is that we're not going to be we're, we're not going to be moved into being threatened to default on the debt if we don't respond. Right. Uh, that that was just wow. I mean, it, you you it couldn't get uglier if you had you know like orangutan showing their uh, you know shiny red butt to the camera. That was ugly. That was fugly. That was just disgusting. They are out of control. They are crazy. They are lunatics. They are nasty. It's like, let's shout at a balloon. Oh, no, let's shout at Biden. No, no, let's shout at, uh, you know, uh, uh, Medicare. Oh, no, let's shout at... Listen, this this is what Rick Scott's uh, Rescue America plan called for. You remember that? They made, like, a ton of commercials out of Rick Scott's Rescue uh, America plan, where he clearly said in the plan... He wanted to sunset Medicare and Social Security and all federal programs. And if they were any good, why, they could vote them back in after five years. And some, like Lindsey Graham and others, said, oh, no, let's not do it every five years. Let's do it every year. Let's do it every year. Let's vote on Medicare and Social Security every year. Now, all of a sudden, uh, they, they, I guess they understand that there are voters out there, lots of us, who would just show up in droves where normally maybe they wouldn't show up but they would if you took away their Medicare or even look side-eyed at Medicare and Social Security. Now, yesterday I played you Mike Pence. Mike Pence didn't know anybody was listening to him, but, uh, you know, people have cell phones and stuff. And they were recording him saying, hey, listen, it's time to have the grown-up conversation. It's time that we talked about this in public. It's time that we actually said that Medicare and Social Security uh, need to be privatized for future generations and da 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 da. Right? I mean, so, 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 please spare me this this outrage. This, uh, you know, uh, uh, I've never seen anything like this in my life. I, I mean, uh, they're like uh, they're like howler monkeys in this way. Howler monkeys, in case you don't know, are the loudest animals in the forest. They are the loudest, loudest animals in the forest, and that is what they are like now. She, you know, uh, the MTG, the one who sees a conspiracy under every rock, the one who thinks that the balloon was going to kill us, and that for some strange reason, American intelligence didn't know what was in that balloon. For some strange reason, we, didn't ha- we don't have a deconfliction line to prevent World War III from breaking out over a stupid balloon, okay? This, this is her expertise in the area of national security. This was her outrage. By the way, the, the fashion crime that, that was committed last night was not just it was not just on the Republican side. OK, it was a bipartisan uh, fashion crime. Uh, it was it was multiple crimes. I have to say, if Marjorie, Ta- see, you know, that sweater that Marjorie Taylor Greene was wearing last night. I'm sure you've seen it by now. It's, uh, you know, like an off white winter white with a, a faux fur collar, a faux fur. I mean, with all the killing of animals that they're uh, so supportive of, why faux? I don't even understand it. I don't, I don't, but I had that sweater about 15 years ago. There are still pictures of me on the internet floating around with me wearing that damn sweater, except mine wasn't faux, it was fox. It was a, a little baby fox, a dead fox around my neck. Oh yes, 
Oh, yes. Where's my red paint? I I'm around telling here you. Somewhere. Fire is murder! So anyway, I, I heard that. I don't wear fur anymore. I used to, though. And, uh, you know, uh, quite frankly, the vegans are going to be peeved. They're going to be very upset with me. But uh, I still wear leather. Um, anyway, that thing that she wore last night, okay, it was, uh, you know, it was, it, it was hideous when I wore it. Uh, can I just cop to that? It was ugly when I wore it. It was wrong when I wore it. But she's wearing it 15 years later and an off white. But Kirsten Cinema, oh my God. I thought she was the balloon. She came as a yellow balloon. She came as, a, you know, a, a, I don't know. Some of my friends were texting me going, does she think she's a butterfly? Does she think? She looked like she was, you know, smuggling coffee filters. I mean, I didn't even understand the. the here, I'll, I'll play you a, a very short clip here. She's in it. Watch. It's also passed the Bipartisan Equality Act to ensure LGBTQ Americans, especially transgender young people, can live with safety and dignity. Our strength. Oh, my God. Oh, oh, hello. What is that? What is that there? She looked like it's like the flying nun, except that the bonnet was on both sides instead of on the top of her head. I really thought she was going to take flight. I really did. And that's why I, a yellow balloon. Uh, you know, I mean, it was just wow. And she's like the only one that stood up right, for, the, for the LGBT protection. Our strength is not just the example of our power, but the power of our example. Let's remember the world's watching. Yes, it is. And they saw that dress, and they're like horrified, I have to say. Uh, but that was, uh, that, that. so fashion crimes were committed. But she was so ill-tempered. I mean, the Republican Party, they were, they, did you hear the part about, this, is, this part's not getting as much play as the Medicare Social Security part, okay? Because that is the third rail of politics. You cannot say that you uh, want to sunset uh, Social Security and Medicare. You can't say what Lindsey Graham said in, in June. I have to tell you, for 10 months they've been saying that Medicare is on the chopping block. For 10 months they've been saying it's going to go bankrupt. For 10 months they've been saying 60% of what we spend as a nation is on uh, you know, entitlements, which means Medicare and Social Security, right? Uh, we need to make a, you know, a, 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 a mandatory spending. We need to move it into the discretionary column, which would give them permission to cut Medicare and so They've been saying this for 10 months. Now, all of a sudden, last night, oh, we never said it? What is that? Lindsey Graham said in June uh, that the Senate Budget Committee promises entitlement reform is a must. It, we, we cannot become Greece and it will be a must if we control the Senate. The Senate candidates, at least five Republican candidates in the seven most hotly contested Senate races, publicly endorsed cuts to Social Security and Medicare and or prescription drug reforms uh, that we enacted to lower costs for seniors. The insulin, uh, capping the insulin at $35 and also putting a cap on what seniors will have to come out of pocket to pay for prescription drugs. Now it's capped at $2,000, right? So they want to uh, repeal the Inflation Reduction Act. That's the piece of legislation that actually lowered uh, the donut hole. Remember the donut hole? Well, we still have one. And uh, there's this period in spending where insurance, the Medicare uh, trust fund, stops paying for your prescription drugs and then uh, it used to be like you had to spend another $6,500 in order to get out of the donut hole and back to coverage. It was like this crazy, crazy thing. So now that's capped at $2,000. Well, they want to repeal the Inflation Reduction Act. So that would put the, the donut hole back into play. So let's not pretend that they didn't want to and don't want to cut Medicare and Social Security. Mike Pence was saying yesterday he wanted to privatize it. Kevin McCarthy told Punchbowl News, which covers Congress pretty well, I would say, uh, that in the debt limit fight, he signaled that Republicans will hold the debt limit hostage for policy changes. You just This is his quote. You just can't continue down the path to keep spending and adding to the debt. And if people want to make a debt ceiling, just like anything else, there comes a point in time where, OK, we'll provide you more money, but you have to change your current spending behavior. And he wouldn't say that anything was off the table. Nothing was off the table. Clear for takeoff. Why would anyone believe anything that a big corporation Don't have time to listen to the live show? Corporate. Want to hear more on your schedule? Go to randyroads.com and buy a stinking podcast.